equilateral is nothing but the area of this triangle plus area of this triangle. So, the area of this particular triangle is what? Half of P1 into D, half into height into base. Similarly, the area of this triangle is half into base is D and the height is P2. So, plus half of P2 into D. So, from here we will get the area is nothing but half of D into P1 plus P2, which means area equal to half into product of one diagonal to the length of perpendicular drawn from the two vertices on that diagonal here. The other formula for finding the area of the quadrilateral is this. For example, let us say the length of this diagonal is D1 and the length of this diagonal is D2 and this angle is theta. The angle between the two diagonal is theta. Here. So, we can also say that the area of this quadrilateral is half D1 D2 sin theta half d1 d2 sin theta in this case. And remember these two formulas for area, it can be applied to any of the four sided figure here. Now in quadrilateral, the first thing is the parallelogram, we can divide in two parts, parallelogram and the trapezium. Now, parallelogram is a four sided figure in which two opposite sides are parallel to each other. Whereas, in case of trapezium, only one pair of the sides are parallel to each other. So, let us start with the parallelogram first of all. Now, if this is a parallelogram, these two lines are parallel, these two lines are parallel. The important properties of the parallelograms are that the diagonals of the parallelogram always bisect each other. You can say that the length of this one and this one and these two are equal. And also the, this diagonal divides the parallelogram in four equal parts. So, you can definitely say the area of these two triangles and the area of these two triangles. In fact, the area of all the four triangles are same here. Now, parallelogram can be further divided here. We can say that is the rhombus. Now, the basic difference, okay, the rhombus is nothing, but it is again a parallelogram, but in this case, all the four sides are equal. The length of all the four sides are equal. Now, in the previous case, let us say if I say this is the parallelogram A and B, these are the sides and this angle is theta. So, for the area of parallelogram is AB sin theta. This is the area of the parallelogram. Now, if I move to the rhombus, in this case, all the length of all the four sides are equal. And if I draw the diagonal, let us say the length of this diagonal is D1 and the length of this diagonal is D2 and this angle is theta. Always remember the most important thing for the rhombus is that the diagonal always bisect each other at 90 degree. These two diagonal always bisect at 90 degree. So, the area for the rhombus is nothing but half D1 D2. This is the formula for finding the area. Because we know that the for a four sided figure the area is half D1 D2 sin theta, but here the value of theta is 90 degree. So, we can say half D1 D2 here. Because sin 90 is equal to 1. Next figure is the square. Now, square we can say that the square is also a rhombus. The only difference between square and rhombus is that in case of a square, all the four internal angles are 90 degree. This angle is 90, this is 90 and this is 90 and this is 90. And we all know that the how to find out the area of the square, which is nothing but simply a square, because all the sides are equal in length. The important thing here is, in case of a square also, the diagonals bisect each other at 90 degree. The diagonal bisect each other at 90 degree, as well as the length of the diagonals are equal in this case. And the last is rectangle.
if this is a rectangle let's say this is length and width the important thing for the rectangle is that the length of the diagonals of the rectangle are always equal so there are two figures here out of these four which is rectangle and square in both the cases the length of the diagonals are equal and it is extremely important for the question based on ds data sufficiency if i say the length of the diagonals are equal so remember that there are two possibilities two standard results are possible one of them is square and the other can be rectangle and similarly if i say the length of the diagonals or diagonals bisect each other at 90 degrees so again there are two possibilities which is square and rhombus in both the cases the diagonals always bisect each other at 90 degree now let's move to the trapezium here now in case of trapezium let's say these two sides are parallel sides and these two non parallel sides are known as the oblique sides now if i say the length is a this is b and the distance between these two is h the distance between these two is h so always remember one thing that its area is always equal to half of sum of parallel sides which is a plus b into distance between them which is h so area is half of sum of parallel sides into distance between them in this case now when the length of the oblique sides become equal this is known as the isosceles trapezium now for example if these two lengths are equal then this figure is known as the isosceles trapezium okay now the other important property related with the trapezium is that if the trapezium is isosceles it means if these two lengths are equal so in case of isosceles trapezium the length of these two diagonals are always equal so now there are three figures in which the length of diagonals can be equal these are square rectangle and isosceles trapezium in all these three figures the length of diagonals are always equal now let's say the uh, another important property of the isos not isosceles but trapezium if you join the diagonals if this is side a and this is side b if you join the midpoint of the diagonal let's say this point is x and this is y if you join the midpoint of the diagonal so this particular length of this diagonal this is always parallel to these two sides as well as this particular length is always equal to half of b minus a this is always equal to half of b minus a now we can discuss two things which are extremely important here the first thing is length of diagonals are equal now right now we have discussed that the length of diagonals are equal this is possible for the first thing square the second one rectangle and the third one is trapezium which is isosceles trapezium in these three these are the three standard figures in which the length of the diagonals are equal but remember there are lots of other possibilities are there i can choose any two lengths here i can say that these are diagonals and i can simply join them so this figure is neither a square nor a rectangle even nor a isosceles trapezium but still the length of the diagonals are equal so always remember that yeah, especially from the data sufficiency if this is a, there is a statement in ds that the length of the diagonals are equal so always keep this in mind that these are not the only three possible figures few more figures are